of the afternoon session day two of the happy bet european darts match play and it features a former european tour champion and a man who could well be one day a european tour champion justin pipe winner in austria in 2012 two-time finalist let's not forget as well against joe cullen a man who continues to impress although hasn't really enjoyed himself too much on the european stage this year just the one quarter final appearance that was in sindelfingen last month when he made the last eight before losing to Jella Klassen. One of an abundance of 6-5 defeats that he's suffered of late. More on that in due course. Uh, let's bring in Paul Nicholson for this one. Thanks, Rob. It's good to see Joe Cullen back on stage here in Germany against Justin Pipe, who was very, very impressive yesterday. The Pipe of old. Yeah. 98 plus average. Very steady stuff. And... He had a very interesting interview afterwards with Elmar, talking about some of the things that may not have come his way in his career. Well, the thing is, Justin, you've still got time to make those things your own, and why not start right now against Joe Cullen? Yeah, highest average of the day yesterday from uh, Justin Pipe, in fact. I mean, we were talking about performances of the day, and I think I, in particular, was guilty of overlooking Justin Pipe when we were talking about it. I think because we've been used to seeing Justin Pipe play like Ladies that in the past. First leg, Justin to um, first. Game on. So it was a return to type for uh, Justin Pipe yesterday. Highest average of the day. 4 is in there as well. Not too bad on the checkouts too. Almost uh, 50% and uh, a very nice finish of 108 as well, just for good measure. But Christoph Ratajski, I think, brought out the best in Justin Pipe and Justin Pipe isn't hanging around here either as well. Now the crowd are involved from the very off, and why not? This is one of the best games of the afternoon. 140. Yeah, it's unforty play, it's unforty in the outset of this one. I spoke to Justin shortly after he came off stage yesterday against Ratajski, and he said he'd changed his stem ever so slightly. I think it's a little bit longer. I was going to say they seem to be more pronounced. Yeah, 140. Maybe it's just Thank giving you, him a little bit of... Um, Thank you stability in the air and sometimes you find that with a, a longer stem and it could be that tiny little adjustment 57. that makes all the difference Hugh Ware calling order there Justin Pipe doesn't mind this uh, crescendo of noise during the warm up but not during the course of a match maybe Hugh Ware's just called for order and they're doing it again anyway it's not only the players that find it hard to keep the crowd quiet but the referees do too but 76. then again Justin's got earplugs in you yeah. can probably hear it, but it won't faze him. He does a lot of work on the mental side of the game, and he's a tough 83. cookie. 83. Justin, you require 145. Yeah, he's got his work put out here, Hugh Ware, I think, in this final match of the afternoon session. You know, in this kind of situation, Justin Pipe, if he embraces... The kind 59. of thing that the crowd does for you. It can be something that yeah. can work in your favour in the future. I think the key difference is there's no malice involved here at all. I think sometimes when it's 81. when you get a few Justin, you errant shouts from the crowd or isolated shout Thank outs. You. I don't think there's any malice at all. There's you know it can be a problem, but this is more good natured, obviously. One thing I will say is the rhythm of the crowd doing it is impeccable. And if anything, Justin Pipe is just following that rhythm. He could well do it with a bullseye. He's 61. You know what? I thought he was going to gamble it and Joe go for an 18. 140. Well, Cullen, lovely first dart. Lovely second dart as well. Double 10. Game oh, first leg. That'll Joe do. Cullen. That will do very nicely. Second leg, Joe, two for first. Break of throw with a 140 Ladies check out. the very best of order, please. Game on. Now, Joe Cullen before this week was on holiday wasn't he in uh, the Canary Islands and uh, just when you think you know you take the family take the missus and the kids we get a bit of sun bit of time away you think oh, I don't want to think about darts and he's in the same resort as Yellow Class and <laughs> spends the rest of the holiday probably talking about oh how are you going to get on when you go to Hamburg next week and we'll see Yellow Class later on we will indeed 134. We'll see some other Dutchmen tonight as well, including the world champion and the world number one Michael Van Gerwen back on the European stage after he sat out Gibraltar last time in readiness for the Premier League finals at the O2 Arena. 
looking for his 16th European Tour title, Michael Van Gogh. And his second of the year. Opens up against John Henderson as Pike looks at a maximum here. Well, Joe Cullen has had some near misses in the uh, European Tour lately. His 99. last four defeats in Europe have all been by a 6-5 scoreline. His best run coming in Sindelfingen, where he made the quarterfinals, lost to Yellow Class and 6-5 that day. Rob Cross did for him in Gibraltar, 6-5, Van der Pass, 6-5 in the German Open, and also Stefan Seatman, remember that one, 6-5 in the German Darts Masters. Joe, you require Joe was clearly struggling with illness that day. So just the one quarter-final appearance so far this year. And Justin, then, you require 130. Well, Joe Cullen took out 140 in the first leg. Can Justin reply? Well, that's the first part of the equation. 60 plus 20 leaves 50. Bullseye had a shot in the first leg. He's missed them both. Joe, and opens the door 52. for the 12th seed. Holding his balletic stance there, wasn't he, as that one rattled into the 25. 16's here for Cullen. Games mm. on the second leg. Joe Cullen. Nicely done again. Very good shot indeed. Very reminiscent of the double 10 that we saw from Andy Hamilton yesterday, which he threw from the Netherlands. Yeah. Mentioned those, uh, that string of 6-5 scorelines, by the way. But mentioned the one in Gibraltar. Well, straight on the back of that, he went to Milton Keynes and he suffered a first round defeat in the Players' Championship. 180 there. Just to keep himself on track here. Lost in the first round to Andy Bolton in Milton Keynes. Guess what the score was? 6-5. And then the next day, he made the last 16. Lost to Kim Hybrex. 6-5. 6-5. Likes a tussle. May not 45. go the distance this one. He's uh, got the break already and he's already posted a 180 how can he back it up it well, does happen a lot more often these days the, the whole six five thing because with the players getting better and the standard being lifted all the scores get closer together and it doesn't shock me that mm. someone who is climbing the rankings and getting better like joe cullen is involved in so many tussles like that yeah well it's been two months or so since cullen secured his first pdc ranking title winning players championship eight in barnsley with a 6-5 win over Daryl Gurney in the final that day. Of course day well. it was. Uh, having made three previous well, ranking finals, and I think the fact that he, well, he made, he made significant reference to it, the fact that he's now got over the line, three ranking finals without winning one, and then finally bagging one, he feels like a very different player now. There are many players who've done that, and until you've actually made that final step, you can't actually say, yep, yeah, I've won a ranking title. That's but he's, he's now in that club. I spoke to Joe in Saarbrücken about that very thing, and... He feels he's a totally different player now that he's been through that 5-5 situation in a final. And that one leg 84. at the end of that final taught him more than anything else that's happened in his life. From a darting perspective, anyway. Now we have a look at the solid right hat, right foot stance of Justin Pipe and the balletic. I will nick that word from you, Rob. 121. Joe, you require 40. For another break of throw for Joe Cullen. Double turn he finds. And, well, in the previous Good match, we had the uh, postman from Yorkshire, Game Peter on. Jakes, going out at the hands of Ian White, the former postman from Yorkshire, Joe Cullen. Looks as though he'll be marching on here into the last 16. 80. Certainly delivering at the moment here is uh, Joe Cullen. Three legs on the board. Pipe yet to reply. What is it about postmen and being good at darts? Raymond van Barneveld was a postman as well. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you know, you get up early, you get a spring in your step, you get good exercise, walking around, pounding the streets. You get an abundance of fresh air. I think there's a, there's a huge feel-good factor to being a postman, apart from when you get attacked by dogs. <laughs> and the rainy days. And the rainy days. The snowy days. Unless you're a postman. The windy in, days. If you're a postman in the Gold Coast or somewhere like that, it's a very different story. Yeah. My postman, he's an absolute legend. He wears shorts 365 days a year. No, my postman, honestly. He's a regular, every day, and um, he must be about 50. He's one of the fittest looking 50 year olds that I've ever seen. He's been doing it for 30 years or so, and he's fit as a fiddle. 
are the kind of guys you want to stick one of those uh, pedometers on and see how many steps they do. Yeah. Well, I guarantee Joe Cullen doesn't want to be a postman anymore. He wants to be a pro dart player for the next 20, 30 years. Yeah. And uh, he's established himself as a, a very, very watchable player and a very exciting young player as well. And a very capable player who has that ranking title under his belt and perhaps can go on to greater things here. He's certainly capable of winning a European Tour title. We've, we talked earlier about the, the players who are capable of this weekend of becoming a first-time European Tour champion. Daryl Gurney, we mentioned. Joe Cullen is certainly in that bracket as well. Suffered a first-round defeat here last year, though. He had to qualify for this one last year. Went down to Ron Moulenkamp. Guess what, guess what the score was that day? 6-5. Six 6-5, five. Six five. yeah, again. It's looking very far from a 6-5 right now. 4-0. And Justin Pipe Pink has been put under so much pressure by Joe Cullen in Game this on. match. Maybe, you know, a couple of shots at bullseyes in the first two legs have cost Pipe, but aside from that, Joe Cullen has just scored a little bit better, I think. Yeah. Joe Cullen has made the semi-finals of a European Tour event before German Masters last year. Went down to uh, Michael Van Gogh, and that was not 6-5, by the way. It was 6-1, but it was a... A terrific, terrific performance by him. 2016, the year when he reached his maiden European Tour semi-final. Played in his first TV quarter-final as well at the UK Open last year. And he's just ticking these milestones off very, very regularly indeed. Still only 27 as well. Oh, that's depressing. He's been around forever. He's actually been on the circuit longer than me. And... You know, I've been on the circuit for a good eight years, eight, nine years. It just feels like Joe's been around forever. Well, there's a, model, there's a model of consistency as well. That is quite useful. Two breaks, two holes, and that is why Justin Pipe has not been able to register anything. Because Joe Cullen has just been consistently finding his targets. And he's pulling out the darts he needs to pull out at exactly the right time as well. Well, both down to the big one. I saw it yesterday, Max Hopp hit it. And the crowd went ballistic. First leg of his match against uh, Mike Dedeker. John Henderson did it in Gibraltar as well. John Henderson took out 160 yesterday as well, so he could do with some checkouts like that later on when he faces MVG. One of eight matches to look forward to from 7 o'clock local time this evening. Simon Whitlock and Andy Hamilton starting things off. An abundance of European Tour champions on the stage this evening. Dave Chisnell, Mensal Silovic, James Wade, the defending champion here. Peter Wright and, of course, MVG. I should have seen the face of Joe Cullen when he missed that first 60 there. He was livid. Justin Pope would be livid if he doesn't get a shot at a double now. That double is double seven. Yeah, there it is. The what a lovely finish that is. You thinking Justin man's Jones finish. Nice Game lie on. for the treble 18. There are the times where just going for the single is a little bit pessimistic. 100. Go for the treble because he's got a lovely lie on top of his dart. What a beautiful shot of double seven. Yeah. Well, we could be on course for uh, a ton plus average here. Don't think we've had one so far today. I'll just quickly double check that. I don't think we have. No. Michael Smith was pretty close. Justin Pipe had the biggest average yesterday, and he too, at the moment, well, distorted by the fact he's not really had too many goes at a double, 99.46, but Joe Cullen with an average of just north of 100 at the moment. The first nine average, though, well, again, it's, it's better than Pipe's, but only five points in it, so it's not as if he's leaving Pipe chasing his tail from the start. 91. Now look at what Joe's done in this game. It's the kind of thing Phil Taylor was really doing in the 90s and the early noughties. He was just consistently 58. hitting 15 dart legs and 14 dart legs and throwing in the odd, you know, 11 or 12. Mm. And these are the kind of performances that we're used to seeing from a lot more people these days. Joe Cullen's one of them. 
winner of this to face either Benito van der Pass or Vincent van der Voort. That'll be a cracker tonight as well to look forward to the old Dutch affair. That's the penultimate match of the night. So we will have one Dutchman through from tonight's session. Uh, Vin's got to have his tail up after last night with that game with Lewis. It shows that Vincent van der Voort has still got some gas in that tank of his. Good switch from pipe to the 18s. Exemplary stuff yeah. from the Somerset man. Well, he's uh, maintaining that average. He's 47. starting to put the pressure on Justin Joe Maguire, Cullen 82. that Joe was putting on him earlier. Yeah, and this is for a break of throw as well. Could have found himself 5-0 down. Got a leg on the board, and who knows? Maybe more to come. He's got to stay on that 25 now. 75 left. He would love a dart in the bottom half of the 25. Nah, he's found a 7 again. He's having a quick look, but it is another seven. Well, I hate to say it, Justin, if you hit another seven, you don't get the jackpot. 74. <laughs> Germany well. require 156. This has to go, and it may well go. It may well go. Double 18 for Joe Cullen. Ooh, well, he was somewhere away, but that would have been one heck of a Germany steal. Require eight. But this is a more gettable break opportunity for Justin Pipe. Ever so slightly awkward, that one. He just had to move a little bit. It was awkward. Now double two. Oh, Game that's good, you know. That's Justin really Pike. good. Steely darts from Justin Pipe. Seventh leg, Justin if he two, didn't hit that, he was going to be 5-1 down. Up. Yeah, missed double 18 from Cullen. Pipe given another opportunity, and... He takes it, and it's a very different match now, because if he holds here, it's 4-3, and we talk about the scoreboard psychology from time to time, and 49. that may well come into play here, and who knows, maybe it will be 6-5 again for Joe Cullen, but which way? Well, they'll be hoping it's 6-2. Well, Joe Cullen, of course, is a very avid Manchester United fan, and he will be wanting to do the exact opposite of uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. He will not want to go out of the door. Thirty-nine. Ah, well. Half sinking to his knees there, just in pipe when that one strayed into the treble four. One hundred. Well, Justin knows he's got a realistic opportunity here to get himself level. If he can just maintain discipline and intensity that he's had in the last couple of legs. It just feels like it's slipping a little bit, and he's just... Yeah, Cullen's won the darts here, whatever he happens with this last dart. It's only a single 20 as well, so he's got uh, 48 in hand, plus whatever he can rack up here. 96. One thing to notice from these two players is that I think these guys are polar opposites in one main aspect. Look at the way Justin throws, it's very deliberate, 100. very workmanlike, it's something that he's genuinely Ooh. practiced, but if you look at Joe, it's something that just looks very easy and natural, yeah. something that can be 99. easily repeated with not a lot of thought, but Justin is a very much a thinking man's player and takes his time on everything, it just seems a lot harder. Forty-four. Joe, you require one hundred and ten. Well, just when it looked as though Pipe was forcing his way back into things, Cullen has the initiative once again here. Fifty-four. Consequentially, Pipe's uh, average dipping not only because of these uh, last two visits, but also with the missed doubles he had on route two, taking out double two beforehand as well. So it's a more accurate reflection now. The average is about ninety. 102. Joe, you require. Colin not really caring about averages here. Again, we make the point. It's all about just getting over the line. Double 18 this time Game is taken out. Play. Missed it before Joe for a 5 1 lead, but he takes it out here Eight for 5 2. Well, Justin just wrestled a little bit of that momentum back, getting a couple of legs in a row, but Joe stopping that rock pretty quickly. And now Justin's looking down the barrel of a gun. Four legs straight. 
Just like Peter 100. Hudson had to do earlier on against Kim Ibrecht. Peter Hudson, the only person to defeat a seed this afternoon, can Justin emulate that? Apologies, by the way, to Vincent van der Voort when I was highlighting the former European Tour champions on stage tonight. I forgot to uh, mention the great man. 60. Plays Benito van der Pass. Again, who in that category of could be a first-time winner, has gone very close this year even as well. Losing to Peter Wright. 6-5 in the final of one of these events. That's the thing. Not everybody can win these things. Some people will just remain non-winners and close calls. Well, Pipe's got work to do here. 91. Otherwise, he will be on his way back to Somerset. 59. I believe he still lives in that neck of the woods. He does indeed. And he won't move either. He loves it down there. Well, he's in good company. Gary Anderson, of course, uh, in that neck of the woods now as well. Has been for some years. That's when Gary Anderson's at home. One hundred and forty. Yeah, Gary chosen not to do European darts this year, which is a bit sad for the German, Dutch and Austrian crowds, but he's prioritising events because he's doing a lot of travelling with the World Series. Well, that young lady's going to be disappointed because she's wearing a jackpot shirt and he is no longer in the tournament. But, Justin Pipe, 60. it could be curtains, it could well be. I mean, that was a chance to at least put some pressure on. He didn't really do it. He's now looking at double eight. He's now looking at double four for a 6-2 win. And Joe Cullen, well, we talked about the abundance of 6-5 scorelines on his CV so far this year on the European Tour. A more emphatic victory for him this time around. Justin Pipe just running out of steam in that one. 4-0 down, it left himself with a lot to do, he did claw a couple back, but Joe Cullen reasserting his authority for a 6-2 win, and a meeting with either Benito van der Pass or Vincent van der Voort. That wraps up the afternoon session, we'll be back from 7 o'clock local time here as well. Simon Whitlock and Andy Hamilton getting things started with the first match of the evening. Plenty more to look forward to besides, including three-time European Tour champion this year, Peter Wright, and, of course, the world number one, Michael Van Gerwen. Everything just, it's putting me off more than it was him, which is what I just said to him at the end, doing that, yeah, really. But, um, no, I just literally had to concentrate and get the job done, that's what I did. Is it because of the first tournament after the vacation, after holidays, to, 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 to get into it again? Yeah, it was just a case of um, shaking off the cobwebs. I um, took my board on holiday with me, just had half an hour, an hour every night, just to... So I keep ticking over and obviously it's paid off, so I'm happy. Lots of people, people ask, are there really friendships on the professional tour? You were on holidays with, with Yella, together with Yella. Is he a close friend? Do you have close friends, really, on the PDC circuit? Well, we didn't actually go on holidays together. He was, uh, he was there at the same time, but we, uh, we met up and spent some time, his family and my family, and you know, really enjoyed ourselves. But obviously it's nice to have friends on tour, obviously. It's well documented that me and Devon are pretty good friends. and. He lives with me, rent-free. Um, but yeah, that's about it. <laughs> okay, see you tomorrow. Thank you, Joe. Joe Cullen. Er sagt, er hat sich anfangs überhaupt nicht wohlgefühlt. Dabei lief das doch alles ziemlich rund.